have reached the point where you want to print something that you've made. So this tutorial is specifically for that. And in my classroom, you'll be using something called flash print just because we have some printers that will only work with that particular software. So just so you know, if you don't have flash print, this tutorial will not be helpful to you. All right, so I've created these things, coin things as I call them. And let's say you want to print them. Well, here's the thing. Do you want to print both of them or just this one? If you want to print the, the one on the left, let's say, when you go to export, you're going to have some choices. Specifically, it says everything in this design, meaning everything that's on this screen, or just what you selected. Very important. I'm going to choose only the things that I've selected and STL. Those are my only options. Well, these are the only options for, for sending this out. Essentially, what you're doing here is you're sending a file and you're trying to save it. Now, on my computer, it asked me, hey, where do you want to save this? And I have a file called 3D printing. Now, because I know this is in alphabetical order, I'm going to put the number 11111 because I want it to be at the very top. And it's called coin thing four only because I've made three others before this. So I'm going to save. Now on your computer, it's quite possible that as soon as you hit uh, STL, it just created one of these over here in the bottom left. What you want to do is click on that little arrow on the right of this little bar, click on it, and you want to go not to open, do not open, because there could be other software programs that will open it and not the one that I'm going to show you. You want to go to show and finder. And this is what it's going to do. It's going to show you where exactly it is on your computer where it saved it. Now with mine, it saved it on the folder called 3D printing. And <clears throat> there it is. Now, very important, you know where it is because in the next program, they're going to, you're going to be asked, Hey, where is this file that you want to print? Well, here it is. I know it's 3D printing documents, 3D printing, and there's the name of the coin. Great. I have to remember those because I need that information. A lot of students, when they're trying to do this, don't know where it's saved. Either they weren't given a choice or they don't know to click this little carrot down here and show in Finder. Now that we know where it is, let's go to the next part. And the next part is opening the program called Flash Print. On a Mac, which is what I have, I happen to give been given a shortcut for it, Flash Print 5. Now, for you, you could open up a file that has all the applications. Usually on a Windows computer, there's a little circle or a square, depending on how old your computer is. You click on that and there's a list of programs. Here, I get to go to applications and I can just go in alphabetical order, Flash Print. Do you see it anywhere? There it is, Flash Print. You can double click and it opens it up. This is where the software tells the 3D printer how to print this. So the first thing I, I always do is check, is it Finder? Because, <clears throat> because excuse me, there's a, a list of printers that this can work with. There they are. The one in here is going to be a Finder, and this is our nozzle. Everything's normal, no problem. We're going to find the file, and this is why it's important to remember where you left it. We're going to load the file. And remember, we kept it in documents. Oh, there it is. Documents. And luckily it opened it up, but let's say it didn't. Let's just say it's here. I'd have to go to documents, 3D printing and coin thing. I'm going to open it up. Usually when it opens, it opens to the very center. Now I pressed and clicked on the right button, press and hold. And I, I look down here because I need this to be blue. If it's not blue, that means this thing is not on the bed, on the printing bed when I print it. Now, usually you're either going to, you know, click the move button so you can move it, or uh, let's just keep it at the center and make sure it's on the platform. This is the thing, if it's, you know, up in the air, you click it and it'll go straight down to the platform. Okay, now some people have printed or designed some things that are so, so huge that when they try to print it, they see this red glow around their design. Not good. So uh, if you see that, it means it's too big for the printing bed. 
I just hit control Z to go back. But if it's too big, you need to go to scale and minimize it. Now I can just click and drag. See, I just click, hold and drag. Again, control Z or command Z. And that will adjust it. Or you could also use these to adjust it. Usually in what you're going to make, you don't have to do this, but if you do, well, that's the control for it. Now, right now I clicked here or there. I don't remember which one, but what happened was this was no longer selected. I need to click this. That way I'll have these options here again. A lot of times in my class, when you start getting more complex, you start using supports. There are two types of supports. Ones that look like trees and break off pretty easily. And then there's these that are just linear and they, it's a lot of plastic, but it's a lot more dependable. If you were to use it, you would click on auto supports and then you would go back right now. Don't need anything. So I'm just going to click back. Now I want to print something. So this software, which in regular terms is called a slicer. You just click start slicing right now. It's doing, it's going to be doing all the math to figure out what to send to the 3d printer. I use the standard, um, configuration. I don't change anything usually. And then I just click on slice. So it's slicing it sees right here, not too complicated. Now here's the thing. Do I want to print it now in my classroom? None of the printers are connected to the computer. So you don't want to, you can't print it from this computer. What you have to do is you have to download it and please pay attention to this because this is where most students mess up. You want to save to local. What does that mean? You want to save it on your computer or some sort of USB drive. So on my computer, it, it doesn't show me much. So I want to show you what yours will probably look like. I'm expanding this so you can see this. Now right here, it's going to put the, the finished file ready for, for printing in where I had everything else, right? In the 3D printing file. However, for you, you're most likely going to have something called a removable drive or USB drive somewhere around here. And you want to click on there and then save it. But very important, make sure that you remember the name because when you go to print, you're going to remember what you printed by name. So two things, make sure you click on the USB drive. I don't have one here, but if I did, I would plug it in and it would say removable drive or USB drive or thumb drive. And you click on that check the name, and then you hit save. This is where most people fail. So please don't be one of those people. Then you click save. You eject the USB drive. Usually there's a little button over here on a uh, windows computer that says eject and you're ready to print. You're ready to take that USB drive and go to a printer and print. That's it. That's all you have to do. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll be having more videos and I'm trying to make them as interesting as possible. Please leave a suggestion as to what exactly you want me to design and good luck.